Hi again, my name is Lucas Winter. I'm from Berlin, Germany. Um, I work in the National Metrology Institute um, and doing research around uh, magnetic resonance imaging. So that's my topic. And the stuff I'm presenting here, it's, um, it's more a teamwork. It's not only the stuff we do in Berlin. Uh, and it's a group of, um, it's an international group of people that is working on this topic to make um, MRI open source uh, and affordable. Um, and uh, we are all dancing a little bit around the open source uh, imaging initiative, uh, or you can find more information on opensourceimaging.org. So this is the, the logo on the top right corner. Um, our motivation is to basically the following. Uh, we have a huge gradient in availability of medical devices. So if you talk about um, open source hardware from a different uh, context in the consumer market, or uh, you might say, okay, it would be optional to have um, such a device, but in a healthcare system, it it's, it's shouldn't be like that. Um, and to give an example here, so in, in Berlin, um, we have um, some 125 MRIs. If you go just within Europe to Spain, um, it reduces to 26 um, for roughly the same uh, population. And um, if you go uh, uh, to um, Senegal, um, you have two MRIs. Um, uh, for many more people. Uh, so it basically determines if you get a good diagnosis um, uh, or how long you have to wait for an MRI. So if you get your diagnosis on time. Um, and um, this is um, a problem, um, not only because the technology is complex and costly, uh, but it's also a problem of, of the markets. So innovations are not enough. Uh, and that's why we started to, to built uh, around this open source uh, um, concept. And this open source concept has so many interesting possibilities, in particular for, for medical technology, uh, where you can talk about uh, quality of, of the devices, but also of harmonization of different standards that are completely different worldwide. And in, in regions, uh, in some regions, you don't have standards at all. So you can basically um, produce and sell anything you want. Um, but also education and so on. So you can um, local, um, locally um, keep the people to produce devices, uh, to sell them, create economies and so on and so on. And um, I, I don't have time to talk about all of that. Uh, and I will speak about uh, the building stuff. Uh, this is, I think, more, uh, more hands-on in this, in this case. So I brought a lot of uh, things with me here. And um, so this is um, what you can see on this image here is components that you need to, to make an MRI. Yeah. And I will go through, through each component roughly and show you some examples. So um, first of all, you need a magnet. Yeah. So this is a part of a magnet, it's not a complete magnet, but it's, uh, it's quite magnetic. So um, yeah, if I take a knife, it sticks to it. Okay. And this consists of this little magnets here. Okay. And they are in this pockets in a, in a configuration that uh, creates a magnetic field uh, uh, inside, while on the outside, it's re relatively moderate. Yeah, um, And this can be small, so you can fit the hand. So this is some desktop thing that we work on. But we also have a little bit bigger ones. So here you can see the little bit different magnets. And this would be then, obviously, for the head. Yeah? And again, if you have to believe me that there is a magnetic field in there. Yeah, um, But this is how it looks like. Then once we have the magnet, what happens? Um, in our body, we have spins and all of them will create a magnetization. So if we have this magnet, uh, we have a magnetization. Now, this was my, just a second. So now what we need to do, we need to play with this magnetization. So we need to tilt this vector um, in this direction. For that, we need an RF pulse. How can we generate an RF pulse? We can use, for example, a software defined radio, such as this one here. But it's the, the pulse is too small from that. So what we need to do next, we need to amplify it with an RF amplifier. Then we need to go through a transmit receive switch. Um, because the signal that we transmit is much, much higher than the signal that we receive. So we would burn our uh, preamplifiers later on. Uh, so this, this is what we need that for. Then we have an RF coil. Yeah. And after all this cascade, uh, we have our signal, our RF pulse that basically tilts our magnetization in this, uh, this direction. And then what it does, it starts to rotate. 
Yeah, so it all the time rotates here. Um, now, if we want to have um, some um, information on the location where this image comes, uh, where this uh, signal comes from, we need something that we call a gradient. So we do a variation of the magnetic field. So here's a gradient coil. And of course, for that, we need again some amplifiers. And with this gradient coil, we can, in three dimensions, we can basically change the magnetic field. So here it rotates a little bit faster and here it rotates a little bit slower. And what we then do is um, Fourier transform that so we have frequency information in our space and we get our image. So this is more or less MRI in a nutshell um, and all the components needed. Now, um, when we put that together, um, uh, we basically have already a couple of systems that can do a bit of imaging. Uh, so here's um, um, originally started from the uh, MGH MIT group and uh, Mark the book is also working on it. This is for educational purposes. And you can see, you can get some uh, images here, but the field of view is very small. So this is like a small capillary that you can use. Um, but for, for um, to understand the physics behind and so on, um, uh, this is great. Uh, what we do in Berlin is a slightly bigger magnet um, and um, that you maybe can put in the hands and so on, but it's still hopefully relatively um, moderate uh, in, in costs that we can apply it in this uh, educational context uh, and maybe get even some, some um, um, clinically relevant applications at some point. I mean, this, we're not talking about medical devices here that are certified, but we want to get there. And also at the moment, it's still this uh, prototype development, let's say. Um, but there's, there are also in vivo images. So there's a, this is um, a bigger magnet. This is um, in, in the Netherlands. And uh, here you can see that there's an, a knee image already acquired and they also did already had imaging. Uh, so this is quite nice. Um, and the nice thing is you can, it's a modular approach so you can exchange components between uh, the sides. You can ex exchange the magnet um, and um, uh, this, this project uh, feed from each other. Um, so, um, we're getting there to get this, um, let's say system, uh, um, running. The next step would be to, to have a couple of sites that, um, rebuild it, uh, investigate it, and then check with, uh, radiologists, uh, what are the clinical applications. So for example, this system will be, uh, um, implemented in Uganda and, um, will also undergo certification, um, that we have, uh, a, a tool to show that this is also something useful in the clinic and not only for the lab environment. Um, so this is the first part. I will come back to the MRI from the economic perspective, but um, first I want to speak a bit about the reproducibility of open source hardware from, from our side. And there are many, many questions we could um, discuss uh, on an abstract way, like if all components are open source. If you use also non-open source components, but are they available? Is it affordable, safe, and so on and so on. Um, but I think it's better to just give an example um, um, uh, where we made certain experiences with, and which is um, um, can be um, translated then to the to the MRI case or or to some other projects uh, how to, how to do things. Um, so here is a, a positioning system. Um, and so for the development of the, um, of the MRI, we needed something that can map the fields um, in, a, in a precise way. So in this particular case, magnetic fields. If you want to get something like that, which has a large volume, it costs, costs a lot of money. So one reason of that was, of course, the costs. Um, we probably would have also, um, could have also bought it. Yeah? But um, if you want to develop these things, it's also good to have devices um, around it that are not very special that um, you can still Im Im improve on it. So we decided, okay, let's let's just build it. And um, another reason for that is because we have these three components. We have electronics, we have software, we have mechanical components. It's still a rather large device. So we have to think maybe of some safety um, um, issues and so on. So we can test also a little bit this um, um, open sourcing of, of uh, things. Um, so when we go through that, um, one thing that is important is, of course, from the documentation side, um, documentation uh, can just show the final picture and then say, okay, just do it. Um, 
Um, you can go through that if you have enough support, it's, it, it's okay. But um, we, we, in this case, we try to, to really make it um, a Kia style uh, um, setup. Yeah, that's each uh, step. Um, you have a photograph, uh, which components you need and, and how does it look like um, before and after assembly uh, until you get this um, mechanical part uh, set up. Um, then um, also interesting in the process, um, so we started around 2.16 with this project. Um, back then, FreeCut, uh, I don't know who uses FreeCut, but um, it was a little bit more um, um, uh, in, the, in the beginnings. So it was difficult to work with, let's say. So we used a, a, a SketchUp uh, Make, which is uh, free but not open source. And you can use it, but yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, FreeCut developed quite nicely. So we also switched. Um, um, all the drawings uh, to FreeCut, and which at the moment um, um, it's still not uh, uh, com not competitive to to commercial products, but it's nice to see that the huge development that has been done, um, uh, and how more and more useful the open source tools get. So also, if you can, um, and it does not take too much time, because to, um, use the open source tools uh, on on your development, because in the long run. Uh, this will save you a lot of time because anyway, you will need to switch at some point. Uh, for the electronic components, um, and this is more the, the, the pitch to, you don't need to use only open source tools. It would be of course nice, but this, the world is uh, not ideal, but it's very real. And there are a lot of components which are standard components. They don't need to be open source as long as they're available. So um, if you have, um, um, and available can be uh, can be meant in, in, in different ways. I mean, um, for us probably um, um, we have several options how to get these components. But we we know from our collaboration partners in in, in Uganda, for example, that um, it's not that easy to get some of these things, which we consider um, very easy to 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 get. So depends what what's your target, where you're developing it for, and and um, um, and always good to check if there are alternatives. So it's not only one source, but there are several sources. And this is the example which we had with the electronics. So we, for, in this particular case, we used the Beagle One Black, this open source, but it's working with a Cape board um, that is not open source. The, the um, software was open source, but not the PCB board and so on. Um, the problem in this case was that the developer unfortunately passed away. Um, so um, even though maybe at some point um, it could have become open source, but in this in this moment, all the information was lost. So for us, we had already a running system. We had a couple of uh, extra boards. Why should we redo it? Um, it's a little bit of a um, pain that you have then in this moment. So if possible, um, um, in the long run, I, I, I think it's really good uh, um, uh, to have as many um, open source or alternatives um, for non-open source components um, available for the project. Yeah, then um, um, nice thing about open source is uh, custom, uh, how, how to customize things. So, so um, here's um, a casing we did. We, we just made it transparent that it's more this open source idea to look into it. Um, but others um, um, did it the more classical way. So um, nice thing is, of course, custom designs. Um, and then another thing which we did more uh, to explore it, um, at some point, even if it's an, an open source device that you use in the lab, you need some type of safety. If you read it or not, I mean, no one read, reads the safety sheets on the right side here. Um, but they are in, they have to be in every lab. Okay, so um, for for each uh, device, you probably have something like that. Um, so even for an open source device that you don't want to use only yourself, which you know all the probably all the drawbacks, but you need to inform about potential risks. And so what we try to do here is um, some more uh, uh, in, used in the industry some analysis of of the system, um, and um, that. Ideally, all this information comes with with um, with the design, uh, and then it's easier for at least for labs uh, to convince people uh, to really do that. 
Um, then based on the documentation, you can reproduce it. Uh, so there are different um, sites that, that this has been reproduced um, without uh, any of us being physically there also. So it's possible just based on the documentation. Um, and then very often one thing that's it's still uh, forgotten, we also don't uh, do that extensively because all of these parts of course take time, um, but it's, it's a testing. No? It, Software you can you can easily test uh, for hardware. Um, uh, it would be good also to have certain test protocols and and um, how can I guarantee that what I rebuilt is also what the um, 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 what the, what the original performance was in the device. Yeah, so um, um, it would be good to implement some some uh, testing protocols. And uh, this whole system is around uh, two thousand euro in material costs. Uh, and here are some of these tests that we did to, to just show uh, the, the precision precision of it. Um, okay, so I hope I could um, answer some of um, these questions with this, um, um, these examples. It really depends what you want to do. Um, now let's... One thing that is important, um, so we can learn a lot from open source software. It's already mature. Hardware just started to walk and medical technology, okay, we're not even, it's not even really born yet. Um, um, but we can also learn from, from, from each other, even though we have our um, specialities. Um, in software and uh, in more complex projects, um, you also lose a bit of this freedom because you need a, a bit of an organized way of doing things. Um, and this would also help when we, think of uh, freeing resources uh, from, from industry um, or um, from um, uh, the public health care system for, for such an uh, endeavor. Um, and one thing that that's, uh, we were also involved in, um, there was a first standard on open source hardware released. And the idea here is that um, you have uh, you have a certificate to, to which is independently controlled uh, from reviewers. Um, that guarantee that um, basically what you build can be reproduced because if you start uh, engaging in something like that and you, you figure out you, here you have to buy components. So it's not only um, um, the, the misery of the failure, but uh, also of, of, of money. So um, engaging in a project and knowing beforehand, okay, this is something that you can reproduce. This will be the first step. Um, this is an ongoing project, by the way. So it's not it's it's, it's just um, just released, and it still needs a lot more work. But it, it's it's an interesting direction um, um, it should go. So that you're not only sure how to how to rebuild stuff, but then later on in the second phase, um, how can you re repair it um, or maintain it? Yeah, and then maybe even um, how can you recycle it no, after use? Um, so this is uh, something I, I also wanted uh, just to point to. Coming to the economic benefits, no, now we have this open source scanner and, and um, let's just think about it uh, or how can we motivate, um, what's, what's our argumentation? I always find it difficult um, to argue for open source hardware um, from, from our current um, system and, and business model perspective. No, you, you, you find always the same, same arguments, um, 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 larger community, or I, I, I don't want to repeat all of them. But um, um, fact is that most companies are, um, are not that keen to engage in this um, open source way. So, um, and I can understand um, the reasons for that. Um, but for the public healthcare system, there's a different argumentation. So we have increasing healthcare costs, and this is, this is worldwide. Uh, we have on monopolization in many healthcare sectors, not only in MRI, it's in ultrasound, it's in other, uh, other areas. So we very often have devices that are there on the market for many, many years, patents ran out, the price didn't change much in this time. It's it's not a it's not a um, um, it's it's not a car where you where you where you have uh, always new features and you can decide uh, um, um, which one uh, uh, you get. I mean, it's oh, I, I think you get the point. Um, okay, so 
as I showed you already, we have this big uh, mismatch. And um, now when we take this developments um, on this uh, permanent-based um, uh, open source MRI that um, I showed you earlier, um, and uh, we know roughly how much uh, it would cost to, to make it, and we assume, um, we're not there yet, but we assume that it's in the same quality because it has comparable properties to an MRI scanner that is on the market. So we know the market price and so on, and then we can replace one system with the other system. And then we can make some calculations, um, how much money the, the, the public healthcare system could save if we could just replace this one device with the other device. So it's not assuming that you have all MRI scanners. So this is already um, um, only for the low field market, which of course it could also grow once you have more devices there that, that are cheaper, but it's assuming the current numbers. Uh, um, this was from the German healthcare system. And if you project that, um, if you project that, uh, then you, you can see that you can basically save a lot of money. And the argument is invest some of that now and save it later in the, uh, for the healthcare system. Um, and additionally, um, you would, you would um, be able to export all this technology to countries where it's needed, where it's needed even more. Um, then you can, of course, be critical of the previous um, argumentation and say, okay, I, the, the companies are very efficient in, in producing uh, devices. How can we be more efficient in an open source way? Um, um, so assuming that the purchasing price doesn't change, but for medical devices, you have, um, you have this iceberg. So you have a lot of other costs that are connected. So you, um, and one cost in particular, um, um, is the service cost. So typically it's around 10% of the purchasing price uh, uh, per year. So MRI scanner, 1 million, 100,000 euro per year. Um, if I keep the device running for 10 years, I have another million. So if we take this data and just assume for the current uh, MRI systems that the service market would be more transparent, which would mean you would have more competition on this market. So it's, again, it's a complex device and typically you, it's, you, it's not that you have the choice of between different um, uh, entities. Um, but assuming you would have that, so you could lower the prices. So we assume here as, as 6% as a, as a uh, um, standard 6% purchasing price per year. Um, and if you can lower this just by 1%, it, it's huge cost that you would save. Um, at more probable, um, it will be that you can lower it by by um, by a factor of two, so to three percent. Um, because if you have the knowledge, um, you could very oft often do in-house maintenance. So this for bigger uh, hospitals and so on um, would make sense. Um, or again, you have uh, many more um, uh, a lot of, a lot more competition on the market. Um, so even on a service market, you could save a lot of money, invest some of that make it open source, uh, and then we have it accessible in uh, other places uh, as well. Um, so as we currently do it, um, it's easier to do it in a standard way in terms of funding and other things, but it has a saturation curve. And, um, and we observe that with many uh, products. Uh, and the open source way is just, yeah, we linearly um, continue. And this is, this is what happened with, um, with uh, open source software. Um, Wikipedia and other uh, uh, projects. Um, so I guess in this round, I don't need to convince uh, anyone uh, of that, but um, just wanted to say it. And that's it. Actually, if you have questions, um, uh, just shoot. Thank you for introducing this uh, project. I didn't know it existed. And I also don't understand if you are looking for contributors. We have, I think, enough people working on, on things and we are bringing stuff together. So uh, it's more how the project should continue. So um, we get to the stage that we have the prototype. And now the question is, um, and there are um, of course companies interested or getting more and more interested, the more results they see, uh, but we know that um, they will not do it uh, in an open source way, um, or they will use the stuff. Um, but they are, for a medical device, there are many more steps. So if we could have uh, the complete cascade um, in an open source way, 
up to the product, this would be fantastic. And even if the company that is doing that fails, um, because you would have uh, all the knowledge for others to reproduce this approach. And then again, more companies on the market and, and lower prices. I discussed the same, the, this concept of what comes next with uh, Richard Bowman, who's working on the open flexure microscope in the mm -hmm. University of Bath. I heard also the same concerns about open hardware technologies that were coming from the stern uh, that we have in Geneva, yes. mm -hmm. namely something called the white rabbit, which is a nanosecond um, time difference uh, 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 clocks. So yeah. these are questions that are oftentimes um, uh, discussed. It's a shame that you cannot find a, a proper use case for that. I think we will, we will um, at the moment, we, we, we will continue. I, I think we will get there in the, in the long run. No, it's, um, but I think we could also boost it a little bit more. You said like this is mostly funded by the state. So is your challenge to continue to get funding or is it another challenge? No, no. yeah. So I, I, the stuff I showed you at least uh, from, from uh, our things, um, was mostly done with with um, master students and bachelor students, yeah. So it's um, it, it's it's possible to do it in this way. And then there's, of course, uh, the network of of researchers, yeah, and that are that are um, that are also all believing in this um, concept. And then it's really easy to, without any money, to get. Um, uh, expertise and and to move forward no it's just now at the stage where this is not enough because in the end you want to have a medical device so you need to have a certified device and i cannot do a certification of an mri device in-house where can we find online your plan and there is so no um it's 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 nowhere written because we we just simply have no time <laughs> right yeah so that's is something I would uh, I would try to get online at any cost because yeah, then yeah. you can try to to throw people at your problem. Yeah, yeah. And that, I'm sure that plenty of people would be interested. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think um, I, I think that's a good idea. And I um, I mean we heard that uh, already this critique a couple of times. Um, we are probably still from this um, uh, scientific perspective. No, we are just doing the things and then we, we get the, the papers, uh, mm -hmm. try to get the papers out on this topic and create the visibility and so on. But I think as soon as we have this um, prototypes assembled and so and um, um, that we feel good about distributing, um, um, it would be good to, to highlight uh, to highlight what's what's next yeah yeah i, mm. I would adv advise to to start building that right now even if it's not finalized mm. um because people out of science have different interests and yeah. some people might be more interested in the process of creation mm. than on the actual product yeah um and the impact that they can foresee from what you, you've done. Did you consider uh, partnering with companies also? Because some may be interesting to help you to do the certification, on, but keep the open hardware uh, side of the project. We are at the stage at the moment uh, where we are checking different options. What's important is that um, we, we discussed it before that, um, that the company does not only take it and does the product uh, development and then nothing else comes out of it. No? Because this would be the normal interest. So if, if I would love it if it would be a company. So if this company doesn't come, then we have to think about maybe trying it ourselves. Mm. Um, that as much as possible stays open from this, um, from the product. Um, because only like that you can really guarantee that you would have distribution. So it's not would be, wouldn't be the company model to sell it, the devices um, worldwide, mm -hmm. but more to help other companies being set up locally, independently, um, to rebuild it. And there is already all the knowledge, uh, documentation, um, certification-wise, and so on.
uh, this 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 should be the the way to go. There are more risks that the company doesn't want to take what you did because it's open hardware, and then they can't uh, leverage IPs on it. Uh, so uh... and it's not really about IP. So even let's assume there is no IP, but all this knowledge that goes into the product uh, development, which for medical devices is is yeah. the most mo most important part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if that is not available, then um, I, I wouldn't be, I don't want to give something like a prototype and say, use it on patients. Yeah, sure. no? So it, it should be, it should be on a level that um, we would be comfortable ourselves to, to, to undergo a medical exam. Um, but if you open this knowledge or not, um, yeah, um, at the moment I don't I don't see a, a, a company doing that. Why wouldn't you create like the company and have it uh, owned by by a collective or something like that, or yeah. by the university? Yeah, there are some there are some ideas in, in 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 this direction. I think it would be a really cool match to have uh, because it's all in the public domain. You no, know? so you could make a company that is also. Um, non-profit company but you could also make it like the open bci guys um you create a lot of visibility for the for open source hardware um even though it's not a medical device but um it's, it's a standard company um but this relationship public private under open source would be great because it's at the moment you have it already and it's really been done in the gray zone no people um using infrastructure from uh no um creating company, but then using still infrastructure from uh, public institutions and so on. But this is um, more, um, uh, you, you finance your own pockets. But if you do it from an open source hardware product or even medical device, um, you can um, have a very easy open exchange, in my opinion, um, between this, this public entity and between the, the, the private sector. So it would be quite interesting to, to try um having something like that yeah so i don't care um, um making money with that it's really about the impact um, um and how we can get these devices as medical devices uh, uh, to people and ideally in, in uh, developing countries